Okay, as we push into turn two, DEFCON is already at four, so it just pushes up one to five. It's actually going to change the U.S. choice of plays for a headline event. The U.S. is going to go for maximum victory points on that. They have a nuclear test grant ban treaty in their hand. Basically, they had a number of cards that they were interested in playing. This is a big score one, but getting three quick victory points, that's a big deal in this game. Even this early in the game, I like doing that. The other option was captured Nazi scientists, which would allow them to boost their space race, grab a victory point there, and, well, that's really about it for that. Uh, I gotta move this China card that's not available yet uh, because the animal in space is kind of an interesting one so the, the Americans might be interested in playing this to push the space race along a little quicker a one point card is pretty good for that and it won't count against their card play speaking of which that sucker should be flipped over other cards of interest well special relationship they want to hold off until NATO if they can, maybe they just want to play it as a two-point card because it's really not that valuable as a one-point card uh, as a, without NATO. But once NATO comes in, it's worth victory points as well as influence. So it's kind of cool there. Uh, they don't particularly want to play a Russian event. Um, this event, well, not for headline. It's worth the points. Uh, really, all the rest of their cards are kind of iffy. This is a nice one. The Truman Doctrine, you can sweep uh, Russian counters out of an uncontrolled European state, but the problem with that is that uh, we just had the scoring. Now we're going to see what's in this deck again, because this is the uh, second turn Next turn, there aren't enough cards, so this part of the deck gets reshuffled. I've got the Gaul up here just to help remind me. I know his counter's over there, but... And probably the NORAD card's supposed to come out of the game, but it doesn't specify it. It's probably a misprint in Narada somewhere. For the Russians, their choices were a little less interesting. They had an Asia scoring card here, but they're not set up for it yet. They also had the Middle East scoring card, which they're set up at dominance. That'll get them a quick five points. Now, granted, they could probably, well, control of the Middle East is hard. Look at all the battleground states in it. Whereas getting a dominance in each of them this turn is something they can probably do. So they're going to focus on Asia this turn and try to increase that. There are other cards, nothing really leapt out. Uh, they're pretty sure the U.S. doesn't have a scoring card. All three of them have been revealed already, at least to the Russians. Um, so that's not terribly useful. <laughs> They'll be using that just for points. These are always nice, uh, being able to slam your opponent's operations points. Ooh, there goes the little face finder trying to focus in on Linden. Is that Linden? That may be uh, McCarthy there. I can't really. Yeah, that's not Johnson. My eyes aren't very good, though. Uh, all further operations card pay, played by your opponent this turn are minus one to their value. Those are nice to start off with, and I may play that as my first card as well, but I want to get this scoring off. Uh, actually, this may make sense more to begin with. NATO, well, obviously I don't want to just play that. I want to get the points for it if I'm going to play it or shoot it into space. Uh, same thing with U.S. Mutual Defense Pack. Wow, I've got a couple of good allied cards there that I don't really want to fire off the events for particularly. That's always a problem in the game. Hmm. Do I want to... I want to take the scoring card. See, if I play the scoring card, it's possible that the Americans will slip something in that affects that. And if I've got something else to play there, I'd rather do that. So I'm going to play the Red Scare. I think that's a better option to start with. I get first play as the Russians, so I can throw the scoring card down next. 
get my points for that. So now we reveal those headline cards and we know what they are. Nuclear test ban, which is gonna fire off first. Now that's giving up a four point card, but for three victory points, I say that's always worth it. And the headline card is almost always kind of a burn. You're giving something up kind of cool, but the Red Scare Purge, ooh, they're both four pointers. I think actually the Russians go first, but it doesn't really matter. So the operation card played by the uh, US are gonna be at minus one for the rest of this turn. It's kind of funny, it was noted uh, that I've gotten even more long-winded, and to me, since my early days of doing the playthroughs, to me, I've sort of broken the focus. My intention with these was to be, you know, to provide the overall picture of what's going on in the game, rather than this detailed playthrough. And I know a lot of people um, become very popular for doing this zoom in and every single action. I'm never gonna do that. Uh, but I have learned that doing the examples helps people learn some things. And also, you see, looking into the kind of strategy that you do play in something like this. With CDGs, I feel like the cards are such an important part of the game that the decision making around them is so important that we're not really talking about the story as much anymore. Although I always do step back eventually in the videos because that is what I should be doing. All right, uh, for the Russians, we're gonna kick them off right away and they're gonna open things up with that Middle East scoring card. With two scoring cards in their hand, they need to get rid of them as quickly as possible. They're the only people with any power in the Middle East, which means the US doesn't even get a presence value and the Ruskies get five points of domination. That swings the victory point chain quite far and that's a powerful little play. I gotta think about what the US is gonna do. And as usual, I'll chain the cards and come back with uh, some of the narrative of what's going See, to forget things, I also get another point here in for the battleground of uh, Iraq. Trying to decide what to do with the US. Now, what the Russians did, the US pumped the DEFCON up, while the Russians, by taking their scoring card there, and neglected to do a coup in Europe. The Americans really want to do their military, uh, start getting their military actions going. Among other things, a coup in Europe is a possibility, but they have low ops points cards. Now, these cards, I think, may actually, yeah, they're going to affect the operations on a coup. So my coup ability is reduced by what I'm holding in my hand. That's painful. Uh, there aren't many places that I can coo effectively. If I start looking, okay, if I'm going to try to top a six somewhere, and all I'm adding is a one, because the minimum is one, uh, that just doesn't really do it for me. Here's the other problem. We've eaten up the Middle East and Europe. Now they're gonna come around next turn and maybe come up or not, but I know that Asia is coming up either this turn or next turn, and I should be playing in Asia. I'm gonna hold my coup, I think, for that purpose. Now, I have, I thought I had Japan in here. I have not a lot of good cards here. I've got the Formosa uh, resolution, which turns Taiwan into a battlefield country for scoring purposes if I own Taiwan. But I need a lot of points to make that work. I'm going to just start playing my cards for events. I'm probably going to take the penalty on military operations this turn. I'll take the captured Nazi scientist, blow that. That grabs me one point. And that actually is just gone because unlike uh, De Gaulle, it's not going to be on the board for a while. And okay. <laughs> now we'll start uh, trying to play from a little bit more. Depth. 
Okay, we push forward a few more. The Russians spend three points, drop the Chinese Civil War. So now they have the card for China. That's a valuable card, four-pointer, and it adds to an ops point when used in Asia. That could be very, very potent. Uh, they could throw a coup in some place like Japan, for example, and have a fair chance, maybe not of getting control, but at least of succeeding, and certainly in some of the other areas. Um, U.S. used... Not this. Uh, the Russians used that, I think. What did the U.S. use? The U.S. used their captured uh, Nazi scientist. I don't know if we did that already. What was decolonization used for? That looks like it's in the location that the U.S. used it. Ah, they used it for the space race, yes. So they boosted into here, and they can play a second space card uh, per turn now, at least until the Russians get up to them. And then the Russians played Cambridge 5, throwing two points in Afghanistan. Now they have not, yeah, they have dominance in Asia which means if they play the Asia card, they'll be scoring the big points for it. The U.S. still has presence, though. The U.S. played independent Reds, which allowed them to boost their way into Tito land, and um, they're now even there. They're kind of playing... Oh, and this is removed from the game. They're kind of playing to the... Oh, let's use my events for my events because of the Red Scare uh, card. Or would this be the purge? I think this is the purge. I don't know. Uh, all right. Well, let's keep going. And we're on the rusky. Okay. And now we've actually finished off the uh, turn. Russians uh, triggered off the Asian scoring. And there was a U.S. presence. So they only got four points for that. Plus one for the... Uh, for North Korea. But anything else would have required more effort on their side. Now... For the U.S., things get kind of more complicated as I try to rem remember what I've done. Let's see. Truman Doctrine was played to take control of Yugoslavia, wiping out those uh, pro-Russian units in there. The U.S.-Japan Mutual Defense Pact was shot into space to no effect. The Russians didn't get that. Uh, now... Elsewhere, the U.S. played the Formosa Resolution. This would only give them one point if they played it, so now it's a permanent event. And I should have the, I don't know, I keep the chits elsewhere. So that's going to uh, allow Taiwan to be a special scoring, uh, special uh, battleground state if the U.S. controls it for scoring only. And then for the Russians, they played the NATO card, and they played it in order to do a coup in France, giving themselves the, uh, the victory point, well, uh, removing their military penalty. The U.S. is going to seem too weak, so they're going to be penalized a victory point at the end of the turn. But NATO's been formed. Now, it doesn't exist in France. Might have been a reason to go somewhere else, but the somewhere else's were kind of ugly. Italy was the only somewhere else that looked appealing. That's probably where I should have gone, but oh well. I forgot about the Gaul there. Uh... With it in France, I ended up losing two spaces in France. Well, I would have been two points more, which would have been four points. I would have control of Italy at this point had I done it there. So it was kind of dumb, especially since I can still coup France because it cancels NATO there. Oh, uh, well. One makes mistakes. Uh, now, the U.S. responded... Well, now NATO exists, so the special relationship was invoked. Uh, some influence in Spain, Portugal, and reduced the victory point play there. So now we go down here, uh, check military operation status. The U.S. did not make theirs, so they lose a victory point. And the China card 
is still in the Russians' hands, we're going to move the turn marker into the next period. And that looks like it for this turn. This card goes over here. All right. Well, let's see if we can get the rest of the early war into this one tape. Okay, pushing into turn three, and I like Ike. Um, let's look at the cards and the decisions to be made on the uh, headlines phase. Where, among other things, Defcon pushed up again. Remember, only the Russians had defeated it. So the Russian choice of cards, they had a couple they were considering for this. Now, they've got two scoring cards again. They want to play Middle East scoring very soon and then build up towards the European scoring. The choice of cards is the blockade card. This is going to force the U.S. to drop a, a three-point card or eliminate their influence in West Germany. Now, you eliminate the influence in West Germany, and I can just float in there. Or I could play my scoring card where I have dominance now, right? One, two, three, four to one, two, three. Not quite. I'm going to need to expand in... Uh, Europe anyway, the loss of Yugoslavia to the U.S. was painful. But that's where I'm going to focus right now. I've got my dominance in the Middle East to begin with, so that'll be nice. Whoops. So what did I play? I'm playing the Cambridge Five, which is going to force the U.S. Uh, no, that's not what I want to play. Is it? No, I'm playing the blockade. I have the Cambridge Five, which is nice, but holding two of my, uh, the three scoring cards that are in the deck right now, it's unlikely the U.S. has one. So over on the U.S. side, this was a lot tougher, but I did have a couple of cards I liked here. I had Containment, which I might start out playing. This is going to increase all of my operations cards by one. The problem with this, well, see, this is one of those weird cards, because if the Russians get it, they'll play it last in their turn and get their three ops points and help the U.S. a little bit. If the U.S. gets it, the earlier they play it as the event, the better it is. But it's removed from play and takes a three-point uh, event of theirs out of the game. So that's kind of a tricky card. They want to play the CIA created. This is going to force the USSR to play with its uh, hand face up. And then the U.S. gets a quick one-ops inside the headlines phase, and that seems good. This is kind of not a bad time to play cards for their event because we're not going to run through this deck before we get to the mid-war period, and then a new deck comes in. Now, that new deck doesn't reshuffle the discards that are played for this turn. So, in a sense, well, getting rid of some of those early war cards at this stage in the game means that I got to play them twice. They went through the deck twice uh, at the first time, and now I've got them again. And they're not going to get another option until somewhere in here. And then the late war ends up fluffing the deck up to the point where with all the optional cards in it and everything, there isn't really a lot of assurance that you're going to see something again necessarily. All right, so let us see what we get with the headlines. We flip these suckers up. They're both one-pointers. I think the Russians go first in a one-pointer. Really not of significance here. The U.S. has to make the decision. Do they have a three-point card they can discard? Well, they have the containment. They have the defense pact. Hmm. Well, we got a couple we don't really want to see played. Terribly watch. Uh, Suez Crisis. That's really nasty. Whoops. Uh, huh. You know what? I couldn't... NATO couldn't have taken effect. That should be reshuffled back in the deck. NATO actually, uh, the Russians played that, but it couldn't take an effect in the play. I'm going to throw it back in there. Yeah, too bad, but uh, it was illegally thrown into effect. So, um, which one do I dislike more? Do I not want to see the Warsaw Pact form 
one of these could get shot into space very likely so I may not want to think too hard about this. Remove all U.S. influence from four countries in Eastern Europe. Or add five to Eastern Europe. Well, that could get Finland, which is considered a part of Eastern and Western Europe, and Yugoslavia. That would be painful. On the other hand, the Suez Crisis is four influence as well removed from a mixture of countries. I'd lose two off the U.K., I, you know, I don't know which one I want to see played less. I'll throw the Suez uh, out to cancel out the blockade. And this is now out of play. And now the CIA created card says I get to see the Russian cards. And oh look, lots of scoring cards. Well, we don't want Russian dominance. We have a point right now. This is removed from play as well. Uh, but we will keep it face up to remind us about the Russians there. Um, we don't want them getting dominance down here. We can throw an extra point in Iran and that'll prevent that right away. And we've just stopped the Russian plan. And they're going to have to stay face up for the entirety of the turn. I'll shuffle that NATO card in and we'll go forward. We pushed a few, uh, a few rounds forward. Russians opened up with Nasser and he's gone from the game now. That put them into Egypt. Now you can see the U.S. is in Egypt because the U.S. did a big old coup satisfied their requirements, dumped this so that uh, Russians can't coup into Europe. And they got a nice roll on it. They now control Egypt, and that's making the Middle East currently not dominated by the U.S., but it's getting closer. <sighs> the Russians played for God knows, yeah, into France and the US responded into France. And now we're seeing this struggle for both of these regions that we know are gonna be triggered. Let's see, three, four, five, six. Two of the cards have to be scoring cards. I don't have a lot left here to choose from. Okay, up to the moment at this point, the Russians played European scoring. That ended up a wash, the way things were lying. Uh, the containment card, well now that Europe's been scored, it was time to slip in and we threw points into taking Israel. And the Russians came back, a four-pointer, used it for their coup, boom, threw a coup in Iran. Not a success. Now things get kind of interesting here. In We don't want to hand that dominance to the Russians. In fact, we want it for ourselves. So we're going to play the UN influence and the Romanian abdication. Prevent the Romanian abdication from happening. And grab... Oh, the Marshall Plan took effect, which you can see just swept through Europe. Now, this one point could help me a lot in Europe, but I'm not going to see that European scorecard for a while, so I don't want to do it there. But this one point card is enough to slip me into Lebanon, which is connected to where I am. Zoom in there, and sometimes it's kind of hard to see. And now I have more of both, more total places and more battlefield. So I have domination, which means the Russians don't want to play their scoring card again. And we push into round five, and they have to think hard. What do they want to do? They got a three-pointer for the uh, East European unrest. If they use this, they're going to make their difficulties greater in Europe. And that's a risky thing to do. On the other hand, throwing Vietnam revolts. Well, we're getting close to the point where Southeast Asia comes into play. But for this turn, 
you see, they'd want to play this early in a turn where they want to use Southeast Asia. So there's kind of this desire to hold this card, which they could do. But, let me get rid of this. I don't know. This is, this is tough. Because if I go into some place, well, I'm going to throw the Vietnam card. Uh, I'm going to pay the two points to push myself into Iran. No reason not to take a battlefield, uh, a battleground there. That's worth an extra victory point. And that puts us on what well, looks like it's the last U.S. card. Does that make sense? I know I played uh, An extra card. Uh, I'm feeling like I lost a card somewhere. Well, let me look for it. Hold right, the U.S. had to discard a card to prevent West Germany from falling. So we're down to one card, which we have to play. Um, do I want to give the Russians what's effectively not a free ride, but a pretty decent ride there of an extra victory point? Or do I want to play the Warsaw Pact for them. If I play the Warsaw Pact, they can wipe me out of Yugoslavia and Finland. Not entirely, I'll still be down. Oh no, they can completely wipe me out. Or they can add five more Russian influence in East Europe. I'm gonna shoot this thing into space. I don't like the card. I've got the Marshall Plan, so I don't need it up. So here I need a one through three to succeed. And we get that. So we get two victory points instead of one. And I flip this over to remind me that I've played my card. And that puts it on the final Russian card play. They have to play the Middle East scoring. And what we see here is the two sides, neither one has dominance. Both have two of these. Nobody's next to Russia there. So it ends up a wash again. The Russians are still holding one card. And we'll just be pushing forward. And now we're in the mid-war, and we add new cards to this part of the deck. But these guys stay discarded. 